We were gonna invite our Patreon supporters exclusively to come out and we we're gonna move 20 miles from where we're at here at my house to the new commercial facility. That ended up not happening. That is a new bathroom. The sellers were ready, we were ready as the buyers. You know, by closing day, the banks were like, ah, oh, we need more time, COVID, blah, blah, blah. We already had Patreon supporters like booked tickets. We had rooms for them. You know, we said, hey, you know what? There's Iguana Fest, Croc Fest, Carpet Fest. Why don't we do a retic Fest? So we just changed the name and charged on. What's happening? Uh, we're what trying to make this? a bathroom. I'm trying to make a bathroom. I got my Uncle Brian here. Poor guy grew up here, been fixing this house his whole life. When we moved in, he said, I hope you tear it down and build a new one. I don't want to work <laughs> on this one anymore. And here we are about 10 years later making you work on it again. Aaron, what is Rob having to do to get ready for tomorrow? Hey, Richard. Uh, no. What's happening tomorrow? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's nothing happening tomorrow. And I'm ignoring you and I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, oh, we're gonna. There's gonna be a whole bunch of people here tomorrow. We're yes. having a party, guys. Yeah, big party. It isn't a reptile show and sale or anything like that. It's just a bunch of people with common interests hanging out, you know, sharing and expressing ideas and views, trading knowledge. Once those things start to happen, I mean, I love this community because it's just a bunch of good old boys. Cruise. Hello. How'd you like what those up? snow tigers? She did good, huh? Freaking awesome! <laughs> I'm coming home with something. It's like snake heaven. <laughs> I've been smiling the whole time I've been here. <laughs> what do you like every time me? a new snake comes out. Uh, it's one of the Krispy Kremes. Look at that pattern. It's always fun throwing a, a party here in Pittsburgh without like an outdoor space per se because we just had to grab a bunch of canopies and every time a, a little rain cloud would run through everyone's getting real cozy and then spreading out and then coming back together. Sean Crawford, first day retic fest. What are we doing? Legacy retics. We're eating donuts. Good donuts too. What's the coolest thing you've seen so far? Uh, it is so hard to pick. I love seeing the Karampas, the wild caught uh, male Karampa, Duesenberg, but then seeing the newly hatched Karampas, the Annery versus the regular. It was just insane the difference between them. First day retic fest, what's your name for the people? Brandon Simpson. Brandon Simpson. Pulling this beautiful cow. And uh, what do you think of Retic Fest so far? It's amazing. So, seen so many beautiful snakes that I've never seen before. Just makes me want to buy even more Retics. I mean, a lot of people follow our videos or on Instagram. We do the best with photography and videography as we can. There's nothing like having an animal in hand in natural sunlight outdoors and or even comparing to and just having the ability to say hey i want to look at this part of it and turn your hand and see it and and watch the light play on those things um it, that was really really fun for people to be able to see both babies and adults of all these different localities in person and really just kind of feast their eyes on the the all the wealth of knowledge that you get just from being in the presence of those animals, even for a short time. Uh, it was pretty cool to see the looks on their faces. I've got her neck here. <laughs> here, see me grab. Oh, you got the middle part. There you go. It's Ron. <laughs> no more carampas in the ceiling. <laughs> Just take it away. <laughs> Rob brought his giant snake karma over. Um, and we had her out with the Duesenberg as our little wild caught uh, imported carampa male. And just to see the difference between, okay, here's a mainland that was bought at a local reptile show here and just grew up to be a monster versus here's the smallest locality of retics on the planet and having that that visual you know where I, I think that that carampa male probably weighed as much as her head 
you know what I mean? It was pretty impressive to see those two together and I think uh, something really cool for a lot of the people that were here. How about, yeah. how about if he gets on one side and I get on the other and you can take the middle? I mean, that's not bad, but I'm, it'd still probably be heavy. I saw what, four grown men trying to get her over here? It's heavy, yeah, you can just kind of... Yeah. Do you want pictures? Got it. Yes, pictures, please. Am I putting her around my shoulder? Sure. I don't know how I'm doing Pick her up. This. Just grab her. Just go underneath there, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. You can just kind of... Oh my good lord. <laughs> there you go. Yes, she is. Get the head under. There it is. Oh my gosh, yeah. You're facing the wrong way. Here, come over here. No, you're fine. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there it is, there it is. All right. <laughs> Okay, you want to hold her by yourself? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Three. Yep. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, go. don't bend her backwards. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Got into snakes. Uh, I think it's always in you. And I was growing up in New York. Uh, somebody came around with a big Burmese and boa constrictor, and I just fell in love with, I don't know, it was the way they moved or something. I just totally fell in love with it. And uh, my mom would never let me have one. And the moment I went away to college, I ended up getting my first boa and named her Desire because I wanted her so bad. So I went through a couple years of just having her. And that's pretty much what started it all. I'm Phil with uh, Thompson Co-Blooded. Uh, started back in the uh, early 90s with uh, just here and there, ball pythons, some lizards, boa, and uh, had to turn my reptile room into a baby room. So from there, years later, after my girls were grown, we got back into it and uh, started off with ball pythons again and a few short tails and the wife wanted a mainland and I compromised with a super dwarf. And that's how we got here. I got into snakes my 11th birthday. My mom took me to the pet store and she said, do you want to get a boa constrictor? And I said, yeah. So I got one and I never looked back. And where is not looking back taking you? Uh, my, I work with snakes full time and I have a bunch of them at my house and I traveled across the country to come hang out with other people that own snakes. I wanted to also do something to, to bring us together and recently my buddy Anthony Caparoli um, from Florida had reached out and was talking to me just about some of the issues that he and the other Florida keepers are going through with these crazy unconstitutional laws that are being passed um, where you know now I think from the release date of this video they basically have one week to get out of Florida or euthanize their animals. And so the state of Florida is taking people that were legally permitted, that are actually doing it right. They got their names, numbers, addresses, what kind of animals they have. And they're saying, hey, now that we know you have all that stuff, uh, you know, we're coming for you. And you have to either euthanize these animals or get out. I'm just the first. It will come to your door if we don't bite back. So there's, there's a huge community of over a hundred people that have basically become refugees from the state of Florida and no relief, no, they weren't even able to, you know, they were permitted, you know, annually. They're not even able to finish out their permits. It's just get up and go. So um, we actually had him call in and, uh, and do a little live conversation with us, with all the patrons and everything to make everybody aware but those guys just need help, you know what I mean? They need help moving, they need help housing animals. A lot of them are having this issue where they've got, you know, their whole life poured financially into these, these collections. And because they'd rather not see their animals get euthanized, they're having to sell them to people out of the state that are saying, hey, I'll give you 10 cents on the dollar for this animal because they know they're in a bind. And uh, it's, just, it's just ugly all the way around when that stuff happens you know so 28th of this month 
you know, uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife, I guess, is, is coming for their animals. And it's a, it's a do or die deadline. There's no getting around it. So I think that's an issue that is always at the back of our mind, any of us who keep these animals, is just that, you know, ignorant people who don't understand having a pet besides a cat or a dog um, can just say, no, I don't like the way you live and, and shut you down. That's, that's madness, that's crazy. So, and they fought, they fought hard down there in Florida, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, lawsuits and, and talking to the senators and all that kind of stuff. People pulled together to try to fight this thing, but in the end, it, it just wasn't enough for the powers that be, all the special interest groups and stuff that didn't want it to go down that way. So that definitely kind of puts a damper on a on an otherwise really fun weekend. But I really feel that having that element to the weekend, I, I think grounds it. You know what I mean? We're all here having a good time, but it is really important for us to reach out and help each other out uh, during times like this. And so I don't know. I'm, I'm glad that that worked out, the opportunity to even bring that aware. That's, I just... I don't even know what else to do. I don't think anybody does. There's not enough that we can do at this point for that situation. So I'm hoping these guys can get help from somewhere. Somebody watching has something they can do to help out these Florida keepers. I don't know, that's, that's our best chance for these animals' lives right now. Well, I'll tell you what was cool. Even though we don't have the keys to the new property by the time of the making of this video or their retic fest, a bunch of us hopped in our vehicles and took a little caravan and parked up at the parking lot of the new place and kind of gave it a walk around, peeked through the windows like a bunch of creepy people. And uh, I was able to kind of paint the vision for the future of, of Reach Out Reptiles moving forward. So that was really exciting to be able to share with everybody here. I'm really looking forward to a facility that can be more public. And, you know, I don't know, you know, we talked about Iguana Fest, Croc Fest, Carpet Fest. Most of those are annual events. Retic Fest, 2022, who knows?